Well, hello, gentlemen. Welcome back. Got a little two for one action going on here today. We'll start over here with what we're doing. So, we loaded yesterday in Park Rapids, Minnesota. It was negative 22, windshield negative 55. We have a cat 349 without the counterweight or the bucket. You know, we normally haul these with the counterweight and the bucket, which would require the Jeep, which we were on the way to pick up when they called about this. Um, we're here in uh, Illinois. We're on our way to West Virginia. I have no idea what this is, but that is some seriously fascinating welds right there. This thing is all steel. That's massive, some massive iron. And this is our load. You can see who we're moving it for because we like pipelines. Uh, in the morning, we're gonna pull the truck in that building right there in bay three where it says quick lube. We have an air leak on the trailer that I just can't hear, but it's letting my airbags down. I suspect because of the cold that my dump valve is not closing all the way, which is uh, to be expected in these temperatures. Um, so yeah, chain across the boom. You know, everybody wants me to do a chain video, so we'll talk a little bit about chains. This is a sling hook, and I just hook it on the track. This is a four foot, half inch grade 100. <clears throat> Going down to a grade, um, this is all good for 15,000 including the D-ring, which is what makes the connection. Then we've got two in here. So we got, this is 15, 30, 45, 60, 75,000. That's good for 150,000 150, pound load. This is an XL trailer, which honestly, guys, I don't know anything about. I've heard bad and I've heard good, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, looks pretty good. It is a 85 ton trailer. And this is a 60,000 pound tandem booster here, which is hydraulic, which is the only way to go. And let me explain to you why. So in this configuration, see, I don't have my flip down. I'm just running. If you see my neck, I'm just running at 125 swing radius with my fifth wheel set all the way forward. So how I can get away with that, because if I put equal pressure, if we had a mechanical evener beam, we would have e equal pressure, right? On all axles back here, which would then put too much weight on the truck. So with the hydraulic booster, I can take pressure off of this, which then adds pressure to my tritum, which then takes weight off the front of the trailer. Works really well. Um, I was gonna switch to all mechanical evener beams, but I, I'm being talked out of that and I'm talking myself out of it. We're gonna order two more trailers that's almost identical to this trailer it'll be the same neck it'll be a 30 foot well nine wide drop side rail it'll have 24 inch tall main beams and 15 inch tall deck then it will be two plus two hydraulic we won't run it with a jeep we're going to run it as um a true eight axle rig 
I know a lot of people are saying, oh, you're gonna have too much pressure on the truck. Just, you know, just chill out. We'll see. But back to this thing, obviously that goes in something and something, you know, makes that turn. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's part of a generator, like where water goes through it, like a turbine inside, but it's massive. I mean, this, it is just absolute. I figured you guys get a kick out of this. We'll stick the camera up in there and we'll see what it looks like. So I, I'm assuming we can see something, right? I don't know what it is. But just look how thick this steel is here and these lugs. And then this thing is, that's all just, it's incredible. It's absolutely impressive. And then you can see, this is the neck on this XL. It's a 180. Um, so that tells you that it's good for 180,000 pounds. So what is that? That's a 90 ton trailer, not an 85. And then their Jeep, they got it set up here where this is modular, so they can take this off and then run that as a two axle Jeep. Um, I'm not a big fan of all this here modular. Well, let me back up. The modular wheel area is a must, but I don't know that I care about connecting all of these axles up like that. It just seems like a pain in the ass. Um, so we had to run the truck for two days straight because the temperature got so low, uh, which you can hear our heater. That's the heater pipe, the exhaust. You can hear it cooking. So I guess the fuel line on that froze up. So we had to run the truck. And then last night, you know, I get up about 3.30. The truck temperature, engine temperature had got down to 110 degrees. And I was like, wow. And uh, at that point, the truck decided it needed to do a regen. And it did it on its own, which brought the temperature up to about 195. And then we got on the road at daylight. Um, for those of you asking about why the trailer is sitting on the ground, it's because the air, whenever I set my brakes, the air releases and it's leaking down. So I can't hear it. I can't, I just can't hear it. So we're going to pull over their pit where they do the oil changes and go up under there and see what we can find. Um, so yep. Yeah first load I flew back let's see I flew back on Tuesday and um, was on the way to go pick up the Jeep and then they called and said hey look at all that snow up there in that boom section that's why this thing's so heavy right but um they needed to move seven of these from Park Rapids, Minnesota, coming off the oil field or oil pipeline, going to West Virginia to work on the pipeline. Obviously, I can't move seven of them by Saturday or Monday or whatever. There was uh, three trucks loading with me. All of them having air problems, including me. Um, it was just so cold, there wasn't nothing we could do, but deal with it so uh the reason i leave my lights on is, is not because i want to look cool but if i leave them on that will cause my apu to stay running constantly because i'm a super light sleeper and that will prevent it from waking me up every 30 or 40 minutes when it decides to fire up so uh it's not a bad looking trailer really um again i don't know anything about them everybody has an opinion on what's the best 
and what's the best in my opinion is what's paid for and that works and makes you money and somebody that ought to stand behind you so whoever that is for you that's that's your best I wish I knew what this thing was that is impressive it really is impressive so by now y'all have looked on the inside of it and I haven't so I'm sure somebody's going to tell me in the comments what it is because I don't watch my videos even when I stitch them together. I just stitch them together and upload it. So I don't, I have no idea what y'all get to see. I don't think I've ever watched one in, in completion. So uh, that's what we're doing. That is what we're doing. And we're waiting on, we have our escort set up for Ohio for Sunday, but we're waiting on the highway patrol to call back because we're 92 feet and we need an escort. And our permit says to cross one bridge, we need highway patrol because they don't want us to cross at 20. So, I'm sure somebody else would sail right on across it, but I don't have that kind of good luck. They'd probably come arrest me and uh, make me wear a face mask, which would just be like a death sentence to me. So uh, other than the airlines making me wear a face mask, I'm doing good. Had an awesome Christmas and New Year's took me a little while to get rested up I added it up we moved 37 loads um, from November to December 21st and they were all pipeline related with the exception of one so now we're starting afresh and I don't know what we're gonna go load after this but the phone's been blowing up a lot of people in Wyoming want us to move stuff we're probably gonna head back to the Midwest I prefer to run there and you can see why because all of this get a police escort and get an escort if you're 92 long and all of that you know and I'm not complaining um, it is what it is, but it's just more aggravation, really. In the Midwest, you can turn up the heat and smoke it on out, right? And that's what we've been doing, so. By now, you guys have probably seen pictures of the, uh, new goodies we have coming. And, um... The trailer, of course, is built, just waiting on us to pick it up. And we're still waiting on Peterbilt to deliver our next truck. And there is an additional eight ordered behind that. So we don't know when we're gonna get them. I have VIN numbers and build dates, but the truck that we're still waiting on was supposed to be delivered to us in September and you see it's not here. So however that is, whatever caused it, I don't guess it really matters. Um, truck's been doing well and uh, I better stop talking about it or I'll have a problem. So. Mr. Keith, I'm going to insert a picture of your cigar smoking self in here if I can figure out how to do it. So you, you gentlemen can say hello to Keith burning a big old fatty. And um, Frank's probably burning a fatty right now. And I only burned two fatties over the holiday. And I don't even remember what brand they were, but they were pretty good you know, like $15 cigars, they were, they were pretty decent. 
so um so that's it guys that's all i have for you it's currently eight degrees here which doesn't feel any different than negative 25 um i guess the only real difference would be is how dangerous or how fast something bad could happen to you in it It was cold loading, I can tell you that. It was negative 55 wind chill. It was cold. Um, so our driver for the next truck, I asked him about what kind of fender system he wanted to go with. You know, and I know these half rounds look really good. They're really kind of dangerous. Um, so I'm thinking that's what's gonna happen is uh, we've been talking with Bruner Fabrication and they're gonna do a four box deal on the back with the hydraulic tank in it because we didn't split the next tank. And then it's gonna have a flat all the way back. That way you could walk down the fenders. Um, doesn't look as good. You know what, we're not truck show guys. I get it, we're never gonna be. These are work trucks. That's what we bought them for. And um, the APU is, we, we, we have that for the truck. We're just waiting on it, on the truck, so. So that's pretty much it. There's our chains. Um, trailer sitting on the ground. Of course, I let it down here just so I wouldn't have to feel it lurching, but uh, That's kind of it. That's kind of all I got. Tires look pretty good. These are Continentals, HSR 2 SAs, regional traffic, 275 70s. Y'all notice Tim just bought some new Continentals for his trailers. Um, really haven't had any problems out of these. So probably just gonna keep running them um, the next trailer that that you've already seen it's got 255s on it I believe they're 255s it's just an extendable it's only good for 45 tons it'll open up to 58 foot in the well and uh, that's its sole purpose and then there's a 55 ton extendable that's coming behind it that opens up to 58 foot in the well. And then a 65 ton that's coming, but we might change it. They haven't started cutting steel yet, so we'll just have to see. Um, I'm considering changing trucks, and I don't mean selling this one and getting another one, but considering it's changing to C500s, Kenworth C500s. And I shot a little video of one that pulled up beside me way back on my last run back in December. I'll put that in here. But there's a possibility that I may switch to those. Um, but we'll see. Peterbilt it tells us they have something similar. I don't know what it would be because it's certainly not a 389. And, um, but that's just, you know, lip service at this point. So don't be getting real excited about C500s just yet. But don't be surprised if you see some. And, uh, we're about 99% convinced that we're going to buy us uh, some property in somewhere in the Midwest to put a, a shop building and just move the whole trucking operation there out of Florida. We don't do anything in Florida other than fish, eat, and screw. That's about it. I'm sorry, folks. This is not a child-friendly station. I just live in Florida.
and we do some building in Florida, but that's a whole different nightmare there. So, uh, and this is probably my last run for you guys. Um, maybe one more after this. I plan on staying out three weeks, but we'll see what happens. I really hate to uh, give up this truck to a driver, but I just may do that. Um, my plan was to always to just go run when I wanted to, and that's kind of what I've been doing. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll let you guys uh, we'll do a little video and introduce uh, our new driver that starts in two weeks. And um, we'll go from there. But if this is my last run, I'm going to try and do you a video. And then we'll still do videos and stuff because I'll always be involved, right? But it won't be too much behind the wheel. But hopefully some. So... I don't know. It is what it is. That's a terrible saying. Don't 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 repeat that. It's just ridiculous. It's kind of like the word epic. I hate that word too. I hate when people say it is what it is or epic or get her done. And on another note, if you ever go to buy you a strobe, buy that brand right there, Echo. It's the best strobe you can buy. They seem to last a whole lot longer than Grody. So that's all I got for you guys. It's getting really cold. My hand's about to break off. It's probably solid. Probably gonna go grab a shower and uh, see if there's any uh any interest so i hope you guys had a merry christmas and uh a happy new year and we'll be back y'all get her done